Watermelons? Get your watermelons. They still got their pigtails. I thought you were a pumpkin farmer. Well, I am a pumpkin farmer in the fall, but in the summer, I plant watermelons. You need to leave. Leave? I can't leave. Look, I still got all these watermelons to sell. You need to get out of here, man. I ain't got to leave, Sonny. It's a free country, and I can sell these watermelons. <laughs> What's up everybody? My name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. And no, I did not go swimming before I started filming. It's just really hot today. You know, it's a very crazy world we live in and I've had a lot of people ask me about bulletproof backpacks. So I finally decided to test some out. Today I have a Berna bulletproof backpack and I have some backpack armor made by Premier Body Armor. So this Berna backpack is actually pretty cool. It has level 3A plates, so it's rated for all handguns up to 44 Magnum. It has two plates in there, one in the back, and then there's this nifty little strap right here. You pull it, and it comes over the front like this. So now I have a level 3A plate in the front and a level 3A plate in the back. This backpack is not bulletproof until you put this in it. This is the Premier Body Armor Backpack Armor, and this is level three armor. It is rated for rifles, 7.62 and 5.56. So as long as this measures correctly, you can pretty much stick it in whatever backpack you want. So today we have both a pistol rated and rifle rated backpack. I'm gonna slap them on our Ballistic Dummy Lab Zombie Torso, hit them with calibers they're rated for and not rated for, and see how they hold up. Have you ever noticed that these zombie torsos are extremely well groomed? There is not a single hair on this thing. If you'd also like to be well groomed, you're in luck because today's sponsor is Manscaped. Manscaped is trusted by over 8 million men worldwide for their trimmers, liquid formulations, and premium boxers. And their performance package 4.0 is a game changer. Inside you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 electric trimmer. It comes with a 4000K LED light and has a cutting edge ceramic blade design to cut down on grooming accidents. You know, when you're trimming uh, stuff. And not only is it cordless and rechargeable, it's also waterproof. You'll also find inside the Weed Whacker 2.0 nose hair trimmer. It uses a powerful 7,000 RPM motor and has an improved steel blade design for those monstrous nose hairs of yours. Also included is some Crop Preserver deodorant and some Crop Reviver toner spray. And I believe it's for uh, your stones. And on top of all that, Manscaped is throwing in two free gifts. They're anti-chafing boxers and their shed travel bag. Be sure and check out Manscaped by heading over to manscaped.com or you can click my link in the description down below. And when you use promo code Kentucky20, you will get 20% off and free international shipping. I repeat, you will get 20% off and free shipping when you use promo code Kentucky20. Again, a big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go test out these backpacks. Okay, we're gonna start out with the Berna backpack that is rated for handguns. So I've got it here on the zombie. Let's pull a little lever. And as usual, we're gonna start out with a small caliber and then work our way up to a big caliber. The first gun we're gonna use is a kel PMR-30 chambered in 22 Magnum, and I'll be loaded up with a 40 grain 22 Magnum. All right, here we go. <laughs> Well, it's pretty obvious where we hit, right there. And let's see if it stopped it. It did, it stopped the 22 Magnum and it does not look like we have any damage to Mr. Zombie. So up next is another small, fast moving pistol round. This is a Smith & Wesson 5.7 and I'll be loaded up with a 40 grain 
5.7 by 28. We hit right there, and it looks like the armor successfully stopped these rounds. Before we move on, let's take a look at it. Okay, hit here, and hit here, and we have some slight bulges in the back. That's actually a pretty large bulge. So up next, we're gonna step it up to nine millimeter. I'm gonna be using my brand new Springfield Armory Echelon, and I'm gonna be loaded up with some Underwood ammo, 147 grain jacket at hollow points. And I have to admit, this thing looks pretty sweet. Okay, let's go about right there. I hit him right in his nifty little pocket there. And it looks like it did successfully stop the nine mil. And I can feel that there is a bulge there. But so far so good. The backpack armor is holding up pretty well. So I'm guessing that you probably assume the next step up is gonna be a 45 ACP. Well, you would be wrong. Life throws curve balls at you all the time. Next is a harpoon gun. What are you gonna do when you got some backpack armor and old Jack Sparrow comes after you? Here we go. Oh, I, I shot a little high. I thought this thing shot low, so I aimed a little high. Turns out it shoots about where you're aiming. So the armor definitely will not protect you from getting hit in the throat with a one pound harpoon. Um, that looks pretty bad. Oh, here we go. I'm getting it. Ah! All right, um, just put a thumb in that. You'll be just fine. I'm gonna take another shot. Ow! I'm actually a little surprised. I figured, oh man, done jacked up my harpoon. Oh, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it hit right here. It's extremely dented. So this front plate is pretty wore out now. So I'm gonna flip Mr. Zombie here around. Ugh. And now we're going to shoot the rear plate with some larger handguns. The next round we're going to use is a 357 Magnum. This is my Smith & Wesson 686, and I'll be using some Underwood ammo, 158 grain jacket at hollow points. All right, here we go. I am going to say that you would have felt that one. Let's take a look, shall we? There we go. There's our plate. And oof, it stopped it. But like I said, you would have felt that one. So this backpack is rated up to 44 Magnum and that's what we're gonna hit it with next. This is my Magnum Research Desert Eagle chambered in 44 Magnum and I'm loaded up with some Underwood ammo, 44 Magnum full metal jackets. Those are 245 grain. Oh, you're gonna feel this one. Oh! That rocked the whole zombie. Let's see if it stopped that behemoth of a round. Oh, looks like it did. Looks like it did. Oh, okay. So you take a look right here. You can see it is pushed into the backpack. But it did indeed stop that round. The 44 Magnum was caught in the plate and Mr. Zombie is looking A-OK. -okay. There are no marks on his back, but I'm sure that you would have felt that. So it did its job. It stopped when it was rated for a 44 Magnum full metal jacket. It also stopped a one pound harpoon. Now we're gonna see if it will stop a Raging Hunter chambered in 460 Magnum. This is an Underwood ammo. 360 grain hard cast. I highly doubt it's gonna stop this, but we're gonna give it a try. Oh. Yep, 
Yeah. That would have hurt. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, big surprise, folks. I think it stopped it. Um, let me take this off of here. Take his backpack off. Yeah. No bullet. But there's a pretty big mark right there. That is a big bulge. Came through the padding on the backpack. Oh my gosh. Okay, that stopped the 460 Magnum and out of a long barrel, quite a bit of velocity, but I would argue that that may have broke your spine if it hits you there, but it would have stopped the round. That is pretty impressive. So the burn up pistol rated backpack held up quite well. Actually, surprisingly well, I did not expect it to stop the 460 Magnum. Now we're gonna test out some rifles against the Premier Body Armor backpack armor. This is level three, so that means it's good for things like 5.56 and 7.62 by 39. I'm gonna slip this in the backpack, slap it on Mr. Zombie, and see what our results are. The first rifle we're gonna use is a 223. This is a kel SU-16, and I'm loaded up with some Underwood ammo, 62 grain Control Chaos 223. All right. Here we go, first shot. Okay, it looks like we hit right here. Let's open this up. Hit that subscribe button. Do it, do it. Now, the armor here. We have a hit right there. And then on the back, we have a very Slight bulge. I expected that to be a little bigger. Okay, it stopped the 223 just like it should. So now we're going to try out 762 by 39. This is my beautiful SKS, and I have some Underwood Ammo Controlled Chaos 762 123 grain rounds. All right, here we go. Okay, let's have a look. I'm not really sure where I hit, so we'll just look at the plate. All right, we smacked it right there, and it does not look like we made it through. We have a slight bulge, but it looks like the plate held up pretty well. Okay, we hit the plate with 223 and 762 by 39, which it's rated for. Now I'm gonna hit it with something a little bit hotter. This is my Springfield Armory SOCOM 16, chambered in 308, and I have some Underwood ammo, 175 grain controlled chaos. It's gonna smack it real hard. All right, let's see if it stops the almighty 308. Here we go. Oh. Right, I kind of hit in about the same spot as I hit with the 762 by 39 and it looks like it stopped it stopped the 308 also and the bulge back here is only slightly larger seems like this plate is pretty good at stopping rifles now I'm really curious to see what would happen if I hit it with a few rounds of 12 gauge I have my Winchester model 1912 and I'm gonna be loaded up with three rounds of double lot buck Let's check that out. Golly, all right. Three rounds of double odd buck. So that'd be how many pellets? Well, there's nine in there. 27, that'd be 27 pellets, right? Looks like it ate every single one of them. Um, unless some of them slipped past the armor, I'm gonna say that Mr. Zombie is A-OK. -okay. And by golly, he is. Not a single hit on him. Wow. So this plate has ate a 223. It has ate a 308, a 762 by 39, and now 27 pellets of double lot buck. I'd say it's doing okay. It stopped rifles, it stopped a shotgun. Now let's hit it with one pistol round at least. This is my Smith & Wesson M&P 45, and I have 10 rounds of Underwood ammo, 45 ACP, 230 grain, jacketed hollow points.
Let's check that out. Ooh, smells hot. Oh yeah, it ate every single one of them. Golly, man. Mr. Zombie's A-OK. -okay. <laughs> I have to admit, that's pretty awesome. This backpack armor has been pretty impressive if you ask me, but now I have a hypothetical that I just have to have answered. What if I'm wearing backpack armor and I were to get hit with a four bore? This is my Christian Firearms Falling Block single shot four bore. This thing weighs about 20 pounds and produces about 200 felt pounds of recoil. The barrel is one inch in diameter and it fires this behemoth of a round, which is one inch in diameter. And this round weighs 2000 grains. Oh, okay. Quite a step up from 308. Here we go. That kicks so hard. Okay, let's have a look at our backpack armor, shall we? Yikes, okay. Tell you what, let's take off this backpack first and see what Mr. Zombie, oh, okay, yeah, Mr. Zombie here, poor guy. Um, yeah, that's all broken. Yeah, there's a lot of damage in there. I'm thinking that uh, his back is definitely broken. Let's pull this out. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here you have it. Um, it looks like it actually successfully stopped the four bore, which honestly, isn't surprising to me because the four bore is moving slow, but it has a lot of weight and produces a lot of energy. So even though it stopped it, I don't think it really matters because your spine would be severed. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get to that, but it's deep down in there. Golly. Well, I have to say, I'm pretty darn impressed with the Premier Body Armor Rifle Rated Plate. You know, there's a lot of good zombie left. No need letting it go to waste. seven and tore him up. Ugh. Golly. Now how about some 44 Magnum? Ow. You just got jammed. in there. Oh gosh. Oh, that is awful. A few moments later. And now how about a little bit of 12 gauge? That that'll do it. There is uh, not much left of Mr. Zombie. Well, 
that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. What did you think about the backpack armor? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and give it a like. And if you're not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics and you enjoy this content, you should do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. Also be sure and check me out on Kentucky Customs, Kentucky Ballistic Shorts, Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all those can be found in the description down below, along with a link to KentuckyBallistics.com, just in case you want to pick up a shirt. This is 200 foot of rope, by the way. And as always, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics. I'll see you next time.